Let us move along and focus on this weekend because, in my opinion, it's the greatest main event in the history of Bellator. Almost 10 years they've been around. They've never put on a fight quite like this one. Gegard Mousasi versus Roy McDonald, champion versus champion, the middleweight champion versus the welterweight champion for the middleweight title. That's the main event. Also on the card, Quinton Jackson versus Vandalay Silva 4. Andre Koreshkov against Douglas Lima. First fight in the welterweight Grand Prix. Leandro Higo versus Aaron Pico. Holy smokes. Also, Carrie Melendez, the wife of one Gilbert Melendez, on the card. But nothing bigger than Gegar versus Rory. Pleasure, as always, to be joined by Rory McDonald. He's on the phone right now, standing by. Hey, Rory, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I can't wait for this fight, man. Holy smokes. I think it's one of my most anticipated fights of the year. It is just so amazing. I think it's the biggest in Bellator's history. And, of course, it's your middleweight debut. Now that it's almost done, training camp is essentially done, what's the difference training for a middleweight fight as opposed to a welterweight fight for you? Uh, everything's the same except I get to eat a lot more food, which has been a pleasure. <laughs> a, 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 a massive difference, right, in that regard? Yeah. Um, like, Not many people realize it, but when you're cutting weights and stuff, the food prep and and uh, organization that takes place is, is it sucks a lot of energy out of you, and it takes, it's very time consuming, especially preparing for the week of the fight. So it's been really nice to just not have to worry about that. Did you do any like diet stuff? I mean, obviously, I, I doubt you're eating like you know McDonald's and stuff, but do you have to watch anything that you eat? Um, I'm just you know I'm, I'm eating clean, but I. I get to have carbs and, you know, I'm trying, obviously I'm eating healthy, but, you know, I don't have to eat to lose weight. Could I ask on this Monday afternoon how much you currently weigh? 190 pounds. Wow, this is going to be amazing for you, right? Yeah, yeah, breeze. When do you fly out to San Jose? Uh, tomorrow morning. How much do you expect to be by the time you, you land in San Jose? Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Now, it, it, so the, okay, so essentially, you have to cut five pounds. Is it possible that this will be such an enjoyable experience that you'll never want to return to 170? Uh, I have to, to return to 170. I have a tournament ahead of me, so I have no choice. But, but in, uh, in your mind, like, is it has this opened your eyes to fighting at middleweight, and and maybe being a better fighter at middleweight? Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see that how how the results go but uh i've i've enjoyed it so far right more than you thought um no about as much as i thought i would <laughs> i mean training camp's still hard it's just you know it's it's just easier not have to worry about the diet you know it's just one last thing how much do you expect to weigh on saturday night 190 pounds wow and and what do you think he'll weigh uh, 200 or more, probably. Does that concern you at all? Not really. I mean, at that point, it's pretty minimal, right? I mean, it's going to be what it's going to be. He's going to be bigger than me. I mean, that's what I signed up for. It's not going to be a surprise to me. He's going to be a bit bigger. He's going to be probably stronger, uh, at least in the early rounds. But, uh, I mean... I feel like I have what it takes to mitigate that and just, you know, go ahead and shut him down. You know, you've been a part of big fights before. You just recently fought for the belt. Uh, you've had big fights in the UFC, of course, in the past. But I'm wondering, and I say this in the most you know, respectful and endearing way possible, you're crazy. And I feel like these kinds of challenges get you up in the morning, give you a little bit of a pep in your step. Is that is that... Is that accurate? Like the fact that this is such a big jump for you and you're fighting the champion at 185, a legend like Gegard, do you find yourself a little more motivated in this camp? Uh, well, not really. I mean, I'm pretty motivated since I got to Bellator and I, you know, I made the changes in my life and in my training and my fighting style back to, you know, you know how I wanted things. So it's just, it's just carried through to this fight. Obviously, this is the biggest one so far in my career but uh nothing's changed as far as my motivation i'm just i'm driven uh these is this is a, what i set out for to, to do in this sport and it's it's here uh 
all thanks to God. He, he blessed me with these opportunities, and I'm just really happy that uh, that it's it's all happening. Do you consider this a bigger fight than than your UFC title fight? Yeah, um, I'm. You know, I'm I'm going to be a two weight class world champion. That's that's very rare in our sport. Obviously, not as much as of late, but uh, it's still rare. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm happy to be fighting a guy like Gegard for the title too because I think he is, uh, if not the best middleweight, regardless of promotion. So uh, very exciting stuff. Happy. Yeah, that's what I love so much about this fight. You two are the first champions I think in Bellator history where they have a very strong case of saying our champions are better than yours. We have the best in the world in these respective weight classes, and oh by the way. You guys are actually fighting each other. And Gegard is on a roll as of late. I believe he's won his last seven in a row. And, of course, he's the middleweight champion. Do you have a theory as to why he has been as good as of late? Um, you know, he used to have, a, you know, he had a bit of a stretch there where he was, like, you know, winning a few, then losing, winning a few. But lately he has just really put it all together. Do you, do you have a theory as to why? Uh, no, I didn't really look into it that much. I just kind of focused on myself. Everybody goes through these ups and downs in, in professional fighting. That's the sport, you know, so it's to be expected. Does that mean you didn't watch any footage of him? No, no, I've seen his fights. I've seen his fights. What impresses you most about him? Um, I think that, I think, well, obviously it stands out that he's relaxed. Right off the bat, like, the guy looks like he's at, like, a boring Christmas dinner or something <laughs> when he walks into the cage. Yes. But he's, uh, I don't know, he's very skilled, and he applies his technique very well, regardless of being in a stressful situation. I, was that some Roy McDonald trash talk about Gagar Musasi? I think it might have been. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, I'm not sure how much of a diss that is. I think he kind of understands that, he's, that he has that look to him, too. The best is when he goes into the fight, he has, like, bed head. It always looks like he, they just, like, pulled him out of bed. You ever notice that? It's incredible. <laughs> I didn't notice it, but... Yeah. yeah, you'll get a good look, obviously, on, on Saturday. And what's interesting about your scenario, as you just mentioned, is you have this fight, but you're also a part of the tournament, and you're scheduled to fight John Fitch, have they even talked to you about when they hope that fight is supposed to happen, that first-round fight? Uh, I think they're looking at January, February. Okay. And and just for clarification, every time you fight in that tournament, is it a title fight or is your belt no longer on the line? Yeah, every, every fight will be a title fight. Okay. Who do you consider to be the biggest threat in that tournament? Uh, everybody's good. Um... I think the up and comer, up and coming guys are dangerous because I think Ed Ruth and and Michael Venom Page are undefeated. If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, that's always that's always interesting. So I'm excited about those guys being a part of it. Uh, Neiman Gracie as well. So we get some like you know more uh, more like of uh, the guys on their way up that aren't tested at the top yet, that's, that's always nice to have them a part of it. And obviously, Korshkov and, Korshkov and uh, Lima is going to be a crazy fight. So, I mean, I don't know. I think it, it, tournaments are crazy. It's, sometimes it's not always about uh, being the best. Sometimes it's also about being the, having the, you know, the most uh, stamina, the most endurance, the, the, the will to, to win the heart to push through uh, tough times and uh, so I guess we'll see do you like that they put you in the tournament or do you think that you should have been the pot at the end of the rainbow no I, I would have been upset about that I, I'm very happy to be a part of the tournament I want to I want to work my way through all the toughest guys in the division so I can uh, I could say that I, I was a part of it too it feels at least to me like this might be the first time that you're starting to feel like, okay, I've got a full plate on my schedule. I've got a fight after another fight. I've got a tournament. This is, is it accurate? Like this is kind of why you came to Bellator so that you could be more active? Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm very happy that everything came together. Um, 
it just it's it's uh it's gonna be a busy year and that's everything I hope for. It's uh not just busy but exciting. Like uh I'm 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 in a tournament, I'm fighting for another uh, weight class world title against uh, another one of the best. This is very exciting stuff. Opportunities I wouldn't have got if uh I stayed in the situation I was in. So just feeling very blessed with the uh, the direction uh, God took my life, and just very happy. Do you think it's a major blunder on Bellator's part to not put the highest-paid fighter in the company, Dylan Dennis, in the tournament? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I, I'm not too sure what their decision was there. <laughs> Maybe they offered it to him. I don't know. Um, it, I'm, it, I'm sure it would have been a pleasure to have him a part of it as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it would have been. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> if 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 you if you win the fight, all goes well on Saturday. Do you plan? Do you, do you foresee a scenario where you may def, like be a part of the tournament with Fitch, then go back to 85 and defend the belt while the tournament plays out, and then go back to 170, or would you wait till after the entire tournament is over in an ideal situation and then defend the 185 title? Uh, it's so hard to say. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to say how the scheduling is going to work out. Because it's not like we have set dates on when these tournament fights are taking place. Right. We're just kind of, it's like going with the flow. So I feel like I'm just going to have to be ready all year. And uh, also, you know, the middleweight division has to, we have to see how that works out too. Um, Rafael Lovato just won his fight. Uh, I think Machida's fighting Carvalho. Yeah. Um in Hawaii there. So I think we we got to see what happens, see what contenders uh, um, are there and if they're ready to fight. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to keep an open mind and, and see how the landscape works out. But to be clear, you do want to fight at 185 if all goes well, right? You're not just going to hold on to that belt and vacate it or something like that. No, no. I mean, uh, my... If I won that belt against Masashi, my my goal would to be def- to defend it um, and you know be active between the weight classes. But if I won the welterweight tournament, maybe I would give it give up the the welterweight belt and focus on middleweight. Who knows? I mean, I really don't know. Okay. We'll are, you, are you getting? I, I just have. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I, are, are you getting a lot of questions about what DAZN is, how to watch the fight, where to get DAZN? Do you get that a lot? A little bit. So everyone always uh, assumes it's going to be on Paramount again, but uh, it's not. It's going to be on the DAZN streaming app. For anyone that doesn't know, it's kind of like Netflix. You download it on whatever device you want have, a smart TV, laptop, you know, tablet, iPhone, whatever. And you uh, subscribe to it, and basically you can watch live sports, and also you can uh, go back and and uh, watch events in the past. So it's it's pretty cool. By the way, that was a great plug. We'd even set that up beforehand, but you did a great job there. Bellator is going to be really pleased, I think. Um, and Thank I'll, you. I'll just add that I watched the Anthony Joshua Alexander Povetkin fight on the zone this past weekend, and I thought it was great. Uh, very easy to use. So that's. As, as Rory just said, that's where you can watch the fight uh, this weekend. The biggest card, the biggest main event in, in Bellator history. It's going to be phenomenal. By the way, where did you uh, do the majority of this or maybe the entire training camp for this fight? Did you do it in Montreal or did you spend some time in British Columbia as well? I did the whole thing in Montreal this time. It was just uh, easier on me with uh, everything uh, me and my family had going on here this summer. And uh, yeah, it was just easier on us. And did um, Carlos Condit ever make his way over there? Uh, no. Uh, I think he was working on his passport. And the weekend, we, uh, it just it just it, it, it didn't work out this time. But uh, maybe in the future. Okay. Well, I wish you the best, Rory. I can't wait for this. I am so excited about this fight. Uh, it, it's going to be amazing. And what an opportunity for you this Saturday, San Jose. The mecca of, of fighting as far as the West Coast is concerned, in my opinion, the SAP Center. It's Gegard Mousasi versus Rory McDonald for the midway title. Thanks for squeezing us in, Rory. I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you in the fight. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. All right. There he is, the one and only Rory McDonald stopping by. What an opportunity and what, what, what a venue that is for this, this fight. Of course, Scott Coker for many years 
holding many big fight cards in that arena, the Shark Tank, if you will. Strike Force was born there, and now he brings this card back to San Jose, the Bay Area, the Bay Area, I should say. Um, Rampage Jackson versus Vanderlei Silva for the beginning of the welterweight tournament, and yes, the entire card airing on DAZN. That's D A Z N. Personally, I think it should be pronounced Dazen, uh, but it's DAZN. And you can download it on your phone. You can download it on your TV. Um, and I watched it this weekend. Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Povietkin. Uh, what a performance from Anthony Joshua. And that's where you can watch this fight. We'll talk about that a little more on the post show with New York Rick. And you may have heard that already if you like to eat your pizza crust first, if you get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 